Last night took an L, but tonight I bounce back. Wake up every morning, by the night I. Frank, do you feel like we changed a lot over these last couple years? There's more than one way to skin the cat. I feel like if anyone has changed more, it's definitely you rather than me. Pickard does not fall far from the basket. I think he has a few screws loose. I think we need to dive into developmental psychology to really figure out where things went wrong. All right, Abe, since you've insist we ch we've changed so much over the years, how about you teach me a thing or two about developmental psychology? I'd love to. Developmental psychology examines how people are continually developing, physically, cognitively, and socially from infancy through old age. And we're going to analyze three major issues within developmental psychology. The first, nature and nurture. Answering the question about how does genetic inheritance, nature, and experience, nurture, influence our development. The second, continuity and stages. Answering the question of is developmental, developmental development gradual and continual, or does it proceed through a sequence of distinct stages? And the third, stability and change. Do we become different persons, different people as we age? But let's begin by talking about conception. The first step, a woman's ovary releases a mature egg. She might engage in coitus with a man who will fertilize her and the few sperm that actually reach the egg eat away at the coating. Abe, is it a good idea if my go-to pickup line in a bar is to ask women if I can help fertilize their eggs? Frank, I don't think you're going to have much luck with that one. All right, we'll see. Anyways, back on topic, the egg nucleus fuses with a sperm nucleus, and voila, we have conception. Prenatal development. So fertilized eggs are called zygotes. Ten days after conception, the zygote attaches to the mother's uterine wall, and the zygote's inner cells become the embryo, which is basically a tiny baby human. Organs begin to form and function, and the heart begins to beat all over the next six weeks. Nine weeks after conception, the embryo begins to look human, and it's called a fetus. Now, the placenta is what transfers nutrients and oxygen from the mother to the fetus and also filters out harmful substances. But some of these harmful substances, known as teratogens, which can be drugs or viruses, can slip by in the placenta. For example, if the mom is a heroin addict, her baby will be born as a heroin addict. And ladies, please note that there is no safe amount of alcohol during pregnancy. About 1 in 800 infants born from mothers who drink have fetal alcohol syndrome when we observe a small, disproportionate head and lifelong brain abnormalities in the baby. Mothers have asked several age-old questions, such as, what can my baby see, hear, smell, and think? To answer these questions, researchers have used a technique called habituation. It's a simple form of learning involving a decrease in response after repeated stimulation. Basically, if you were to play a sound for a baby repeatedly several times, it would draw more of his attention the first few times than the last few times. Boring. Psychologists have also found that we are born preferring sights and sounds that facilitate social responsiveness. For example, newborns turn their heads in the directions of human voices, as if ready to socially respond by answering the voices. They also gaze longer at drawings of face-like images than they do at bullseye patterns, since newborns know they can actually communicate with other humans and their faces. Now, Frank, I just told you that a baby can discern the difference between a face and a bullseye, but what are the origins of our cognitive development? Great question, Abe. Yeah, let's take a look at why babies, even when they're zero years old, can do that. We're actually born with most of the neurons our brains will ever need, but most of them, such as those that control memory or motor control, are unused while we are babies. As we grow, we expand our use of our brain's different parts as we learn how to walk and speak. The process of genetically dictated growth is known as maturation. 
Maturation means that when we are very young, experience has no impact on development. For example, you can try to teach your baby how to walk as much as you want, but they simply won't be able to until they're old enough. An important part of maturation is the development of cognition, when we gain the ability to form complex memories and think rationally. An example of this would be the formation of schemas or frameworks that we use to organize information. We can't talk anymore about childhood development without mentioning Jean Piaget, one of the titans of developmental psychology. Piaget studied how our minds develop for over 50 years and noticed that there were stages to how children developed. He noticed that from birth until age two, children seem to be set in the sensory motor stage. Children there are experiencing the world through the five senses, touch, taste, sound, etc. And learning the concept of object permanence, the idea that objects exist even when they cannot be seen or touched. The child in that picture there is upset. He thinks that his teddy bear or dog or whatever that is has simply vanished from the earth since he can no longer perceive it with his eyes. Next up is the pre-operational stage, ages two to seven. That's when children learn how to convey and represent ideas and objects with words and language but they lack logical reasoning. They also lack an understanding of what Piaget called conservation, which is an understanding that an object's weight or the number of it remain unchanged, even if the object itself is manipulated to look different. Children in the pre-operational stage also exhibit egocentrism, an extreme inability to see things from others' perspectives. A quick or easy example of egocentrism would be a child who, having thrown a blanket over his face, thinks that other adults, such as myself, can no longer see him because he can't see us. Abe, I don't think we could talk any more about Piaget's stages without first addressing what the theory of the mind is. So can you run us through that real quick? I completely agree. Let's talk about it. Remember back to the story of Little Red Riding Hood, the moment when she realizes her grandmother is actually a wolf. Little Red Riding Hood understands the wolf's intentions and immediately decides to run away because of her theory of mind. So the theory of mind is your ideas about your own and others' mental states. Mental states being their feelings, perceptions, and thoughts. And theory of mind also includes the behaviors that might come from said feelings, perceptions, and thoughts. So when I began to form my theory of mind, I understood why Frank got angry when I shoved Sandbark down his pants on the playground. And I also began to understand how to convince my parents to buy me more toys. Basically, I developed the ability to take on another person's perspective on life. And children typically develop their theories of mind by ages four to five, and by age seven, they become increasingly capable of thinking in words and using words to solve problems. Six plus eight is 10, nine plus four is 13. Yes, Frank. For example, second graders who mutter to themselves while doing math problems grasp third grade math much better when they enter the third grade. Now, let's talk about the concrete operational stage, the third stage. This occurs from about ages six to seven to 11, age 11, and children gain the ability to think logically about concrete events. They begin to grasp conservation, which Frank discussed before. For example, I can ask Frank the following question. If John is in school, then Mary's in school. John is in school. What can we say about Mary? Mary's in school also. Very good. So even though Frank doesn't know anyone named John and Mary and these two people don't actually exist, Frank was able to think abstractly and answer the question. You're wearing, there's nothing beneath it. Forgive me for staring. 